Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert uh, with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this short video is going to deal with the calculation of type, what we've called type 4 probabilities. Okay, so our type 4 probabilities, type 4 probabilities, are probabilities where we want to calculate the probability of observing a z-score less than a particular value, where this value is going to be negative. Okay. So because we're dealing with the z distribution, uh, let's draw our standard normal uh, distribution with respect to this type of probability. Uh, so these types of probabilities are probabilities uh, where the z variable that we're interested in is less than a particular, a particular negative value. So we know that our standard normal distribution is centered on zero. The horizontal axis represents the z-axis. Okay, And we want to calculate the probability of observing a z-score less than a negative value. And all the negative values are to the left-hand side of zero here. So let's just say that x1 is resides over here somewhere, to the left of zero, because here are the negative scores. Okay, so the probability of a z-score being less than x1 includes all the z-scores to the left that are less than x1. So in this situation here, we're being asked, can you calculate the area under the curve to the left-hand side of x1? Or can we calculate a left-hand tail area? Okay, so that's the type of probability that we're interested in. So let's have a look at a specific example. Okay, so let's say we're interested in what's the probability of observing a z-score that's less than minus 1.43. Okay, so the first thing we'll always do is we'll draw our standard normal curve for the z-variable. Our standard normal curve looks something like this, okay? It's centered on zero, the horizontal axis represents the z-variable. And our bound that we have here is minus 1.43. So minus 1.43 is to the left hand side of 0, so let's just say it's in here somewhere, which is minus 1.43, okay? And I'm interested in the probability of a z-score being less than that, so I'm interested in the probability of the z-scores, or any z-score over this side, the left hand tail area, with respect to minus 1.43. Now. Unfortunately, the way we've set up our tables is we've set up our tables where we only give you areas with respect to positive z values. Yeah? This is our first challenge that we're encountering here is we have a negative z value. Yeah? But let's keep in mind one of the characteristics of the standard normal distribution. And one of the characteristics is that the curve is symmetrical about zero. Okay, so let's take this curve here, okay, now the left hand tail is pointing in my thumbs direction, okay, and because it's symmetrical, let's take the curve and let's flip the curve over, okay. So when we rotate the curve, okay, so when we rotate, okay, what we get is we get a, a similar curve, it's still going to be centered on zero, okay, but minus 1.43 is 1.43 units to the left of zero. And when we flip it over, it becomes 1.43 units to the right of zero. Okay. Now our tail area on this side, when we flip over, becomes a tail area on the right hand side. So this probability that we were interested in here, the probability of z being less than minus 1.43, is exactly the same or equivalent to the probability of z being greater than 1.43. Okay? Here we're interested in z being less than negative 1.43. When we flip, it's equivalent to the probability of z being greater than 1.43. And in one of our previous videos, we've dealt with the calculation of probabilities uh, where we're dealing with right-hand tail areas. But, anyway, what we do is, once we have a positive value, we look the positive value up on our Z tables. Our first, dec our first significant digit and our first decimal digit is 1.4, so we come down to 1.40. And our second decimal digit is 3, so we come across to 0 0.03. Now when we go to our tables, and when I look up 1.4 in the first column, and when I come across to the column labeled 0 0.03, we get a value of 0 0.9236. So, this value on our tables is 0 0.9326. Right, so what does that mean with respect to this 1.43? 
That means that the area to the left hand side of 1.43 is 0 0.9326. Now what we know is another Another, I suppose, characteristic of the standard normal distribution is that the total area under the curve is equal to one unit. So once again, we know that the area out to positive infinity and to negative infinity is one unit. Once again, if we take the shorter line away from the longer line, we end up with the area in the right-hand tail. So this area in the right-hand tail is the longer line minus the shorter line, 0.9326. And when we do that on our calculator, okay, we get a value of 1 minus 0 0.9326 gives us a value of 0 0.0674. Okay, so what does that mean? So that means that the area to the right hand side of 1.43 is 0 0.0674. Okay. But what we know through symmetry is that this particular area is the same as the area to the left hand side of minus 1.43. In other words, the probability of z being less than minus 1.43 is equivalent to the probability of z being greater than 1.43, which is equal to 0 0.0674, uh, which basically means if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, well then through transitivity we have A is equal to C. Or equivalently, we have as a percentage this area to the right hand side of 1.43 or to the left hand side of minus 1.43 represents 6.74% uh, of the area under the curve. Okay guys, uh, that's, that's us done now with respect to type 4 probabilities. There are probabilities where we need to calculate the, the, the probability of a z-score being less than a particular value, where that value is negative. In other words, we have to calculate a left-hand tail area. And to calculate that left-hand tail area, the first thing we do is, well, we represent it as our probability with respect to the standard normal distribution and with respect to zero. We rotate the curve or we flip the curve to give us an alternative probability. The left tail area now has gone to the right tail area, and we just calculate a right tail area as we would have previously. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'm Jonathan Lambert uh, from the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.